Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. Now this is part two of my Alpha 2.6 series, and in this video we're going to take a look at the newly released Drake Herald. So the Drake Herald is a pretty unique bird. It's a two-person information runner. It's designed to intercept, store, and possibly even transmit data. The ship does this via the SATA M6A1 satellite array, which you can see here. It's behind these hatches. I'll show you those deployed when we do the test flight. And it stores the data in these external data pods, and there's four on each side. Now these look like they might be able to be possibly removed. I don't know. But sure would make an interesting gameplay element if you could you know, bring one of these boxes in and, uh, yeah, hand it off to somebody or allow them to copy the data. So, it, it, or it could be, you could just jettison these in flight, possibly, for someone to pick up. So it's, it's interesting, interesting uh, design here. This ship is fast, and by fast, I mean it accelerates faster than any ship I've ever seen in-game, and it does so via these two TR-3 main thrusters, and they're just absolutely massive. Now, the ship doesn't maneuver too well, but, man, it, it, it goes. I believe the top speed in afterburner is 1,000 meters per second. Uh, I'm not sure what the current SCM is. We'll see that when I test it. But, yeah. For weaponry, the ship's got a pretty decent loadout. It comes with a size 3 hardpoint up front, which comes stock with a size 3 gimbal and a size 2 CF-117 Badger repeater. And on the wings, this has actually been downgraded since the Ibukati build. These were size 3s as well, but now they're size 1s. So we've got two size 1 CF-007 Bulldog repeaters, and those are fixed. So decent loadout, not overly powerful. But it's enough to get the job done. The main focus of this ship is not to stay and fight. It's more to get your information and get out. So let's just take a look around the ship. Again, the Drake engines. This looks like the same engines that's on the back of the command module on the Caterpillar. These are just massive, oversized engines. Really cool looking. A lot of nice detail with the piping. There you can see your four-way fixed maneuvering thruster there. The wing hard point. Some nice basic landing gear. Of course, here's the data modules. Now up in what looks like an intake, this is actually a missile port, and this has been reduced as well. There used to be six missiles, or I believe even eight missiles on each side. It's down to four on each side now, so you've got four size one missiles. It comes stock with uh, the task force missiles, I believe those are um, EM type missiles. There's another set of Maneuvering thrusters there again, four ways. And yeah, it's a pretty interesting looking ship. Uh, it kind of resembles, I don't know, a tick. <laughs> Which it's actually is kind of appropriate since it sits there and sucks in all that information. To enter the ship, you go in through the side entrance. And this kind of looks like the, uh, the freelancer's side entrance. It works very similarly. You can go up the ladder here. And the interior of the ship is mostly taken up with all of the equipment used to run the antenna array. There's a button here to close the door. And then you've got, well, you've got a weapon rack here, so that's nice if you need to jump out. Right now, we can pretty much wear whatever armor we want and whatever weapons we want while we're flying, but in the future likely we'll be 
limited to a flight suit when you're actually flying a ship and maybe a sidearm. So it'll be nice to have a weapons rack that you can jump in and grab a rifle before you jump out of the ship. Got some uh, storage containers. These are very similar to the ones on the Caterpillar. 0.24 SCU, thermal seal, radio wave protection, so illicit goods can be stored in here without being worried. You have to worry about people scanning your ship. You've got all these computer racks. Of course, the Drake is all computer. This button here actually opens the antenna array. I can't do that while we're landing. Well, I can, but it's going to mess up the ship because it's not designed to open when it's landed. Of course, got a little toilet here. And you've got a bunk and a sink. Oh, nice. Some emergency supplies. I haven't seen this before. But really, the interior just looks like pretty much the same as the Caterpillar. It's the same type of insulation, the girders, the exposed wiring. Very, very cool. Very industrial. Very basic. Let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit here. A little bit of glitch there. There we go. Also, it looks like the ship is slowly drifting to the left. But here is your view, and it's not a bad view. It's actually pretty good. We've got some of these girders here. But it's very similar to the what I think the Cutlass is going to look like after it gets finished with its overhaul. Very nice. So you've got six MFDs, your two mains down there at the bottom. I don't know if I can... No, I can't zoom in on them. And the center is for your radar display. So, not bad. All right, let's take it into Arena Commander Free Flight, and I'll show you how it performs. Your systems are online. Okay, so here we are inside of Broken Moon, free flight, and you can see the ship's top speed in standard combat maneuvering is 185, which is actually pretty fast. With the new balance, most fighters do between 150 and 200 meters per second. So this one's right at the very top range of that, which is pretty impressive. Now what's really impressive is the ship's ability to accelerate to its full cruise speed with afterburner. So let me go ahead and spin around here. And watch the speed as I hit this afterburner. And boom, we're at maximum velocity of a thousand meters per second. Let me spin around. You can see the rotation of the ship is a little slow. That's its downfall. It doesn't have a very high rotational speed. So while it's fast, it just doesn't turn. All right. So yeah, what was that? About, about two and a half, maybe three seconds to go from 200 meters per second to 1,000. So yeah, the ship, ship gets up and goes. Again, the maneuvering isn't all that great. It's still better than the Misk Reliant, <laughs> but hey, we're not here to judge other ships. We're here to look at this one. Let's go to an external view and we'll check out this beauty in flight. Well, and I use that term loosely. There you can see those massive engines. Get the afterburner. Get a little bit close here. Let me use the, the new camera system to get in close to one of the maneuvering thrusters. You can see they're just a fixed thruster. Not a whole lot of animations on the ship. It's very, very basic. Reset my view, and I'll show you the landing gear. Again, very simple, very basic, very Drake. The only other animation on the ship besides the door entry and exit 
is that antenna array. Unfortunately, I have to get out of the pilot seat to extend it. So you can't actually see the animation. And there's the antenna array fully extended. So yeah, supposedly, of course, these are very fragile antennas. So when you're flying around, they're easy to get shot off and probably take damage. Uh, be, be kind of expensive to fix, I don't know. But they're pretty cool. Kind of a glowing effect on the on the main panels there, and then you've got sort of a almost looks like a solar panel on the triangular sections. Yeah. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, the uh, data system that this ship is designed to use is not in place. So really, all you can do with the ship in the current build is fly it, fight it, maybe try to race it, though probably not recommended. It's still a lot of fun. Medium-ish weapons. It's not very durable. Uh, the shields go down pretty quick. Uh, the hulls, eh. But, yeah, it's not designed to be a fighter. It's designed to use that antenna array, intercept transmissions, store them, or possibly even retransmit them. So, pretty cool. Not a ship I'd probably pick up right off the bat, uh, unless you're really, really interested in information dealing. Uh, but, yeah, really cool ship. Definitely worth a rent, just for its unique flight characteristics. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you in the verse.